Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, if you're on Facebook, make sure and check out our community group. I always love seeing a new friend come in there. Mm -hmm. They say, I want to know more about God's word. I want to get part of the community. Or I've been listening to you on the podcast and I want to get to know you better. We are so glad when you come and join us there. We are. And we just had someone join this week and she's like, where, where do I start? Do I start from the beginning? And um, several other people jumped in and said, no, just, just start from like the beginning of the new Testament or start here. And it was just cool to see that everybody's encouraging each other. And that's what this is about. That's Mm -hmm. what we wanted to start was just encouragement to stay in the word and encouragement to keep, keep each other faithful. Exactly. So. Anyway, okay, well, today we are reading Acts 10, Acts 11, and Acts 12, 1 through 5. And so remember how we talked about sanctification yesterday, how it's a process? Well, we see some of this process with our dear friend, Peter. He has come a long, long way, and he still has more to go. I mean, we saw him during the storm try to walk on the water. We we witnessed him deny deny Christ the night that Christ was on trial. And then we watched him blossom into a powerful Mm -hmm. preacher. He was bold. He was unwavering. And now we are watching him being sanctified through and through just one more step. One more layer is what God has for him today. And if we step back, we witness God working in amazing ways, just using that sanctification process to bring more and more people into the story. Again, using people, bringing them into his bigger story and giving them a part to play. So keep keep that sanctification in mind as we unravel the story. So today, Cornelius, a Roman centurion and a Gentile, has a vision and sends two of his servants and a soldier to Joppa. Peter is still in Joppa, and he also has a vision, and Peter is still adhering. He's adhering to some customs, some traditions concerning clean and unclean, and that comes into his views of Jews versus Gentiles and how he treats the Gentiles. And Cornelius's men meet up with Peter and explain who they are. The next day, they take Peter back to their leader in Caesarea. And Cornelius was waiting for Peter with his family and close friends. Okay, just stop. First of all, Peter has this vision. And then all of a sudden, he takes off with these two unknown men or three unknown men. I mean, I just, I'm like, when I let's just go. I know. Let me just let okay, guys, let's go. I'm just gonna drop what I have here and I'm just gonna go. Well, it, that shows you that obviously Peter's discerning, he's listening to God, and he goes. So Peter shares how how the Jews have certain customs about associating with the Gentiles, but God is correcting his vision and his thinking on this. And in fact, he says, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. Other translations use the word partiality, and this is the foundation for Peter's understanding Mm -hmm. that the gospel should now go forth to the Gentiles. So again, remember, sanctification is a process. It's one step at a time, and this is another part of that for Peter. The statement goes goes completely against the prevailing Jewish thought that at that time that God certainly did show partiality toward the Jews and against the Gentiles. In essence, many Jews of Peter's day thought that God loved the Jews while hating the Gentiles. That is from EnduringWord.com. Also, according to commentator William Barclay, it was common for a Jewish man to begin the day with a prayer thanking God that he was not a slave, that he was not a Gentile, and that he was not a woman. Mm. So just think about some of those customs and traditions that are so deeply ingrained into their hearts. And then to go one step further, if a Jew married a Gentile, the Jewish community would have a funeral for the Jew and consider them dead. 
Wow. So again, those are some very ingrained customs. Those are some very ingrained beliefs and traditions. And it did take, it was total sanctification for Peter to go, oh yeah, that's a custom. That's not truly the way it is. So then we see Peter preaching the good news of Jesus Christ and that that Christ is Lord of all all, not just the Jews, but all Jews and Gentiles. And as he preached, the Holy Spirit just fell on the group and they spoke in tongues, they worshiped God, and they were all baptized. Yeah, and I love it. So then, you know, first of all, he must have been shocked that this was happening. Like you said, they thought this was for the Jews, although Jesus did say all nations go into the you know nations. Mm-hmm. So he probably had hints, but now he's seen it happen. So then when he goes back and he tells the believers in Jerusalem, it's almost like in Acts 11, he's like, hey, guys, you'll never believe what just happened. And he tells them about Cornelius and his household and explains that the vision like he's re hashing everything that just happened. And at first they're like, huh, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it wasn't just him saying, wow, this is amazing because they were questioning. And yeah. then when they kept listening, like, oh, wait, they got the Holy Spirit too. They realized that God had granted the Gentiles repentance and they too were able to receive eternal life. They're like, oh, wait, this is for everybody. And so I love it after he went and told everybody that they were even questioning So then we get over to Acts 12, and then we have a different narrative, which has King Herod Agrippa I, who Mm. sought to gain with the Jews. And so he arrested some of the believers, including James, the brother of John, and imprisoned them. And then he killed James with a sword. And I'm like, literally, I was like, what? Wait, 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 wait. (laughs) I'm like, wait, like, this is, this is happening already like I didn't even remember that it was happening this quickly that they were getting arrested and so I looked it up and normally it meant that he was beheaded so like we these are the sons of thunder like James and John he's already beheaded and okay also I'm watching the chosen I don't know if you watch the chosen I love the show about them the new testament disciples following jesus and so then i get to know them better i feel like i know them better from that show Mm -hmm. but just the fact that i think what the one thing that the show has shown me is that these guys were close so we talk about the 12 disciples the 12 disciples all the time you know but like these they were walking together they were talking together they They were were camping together they were doing Mm -hmm. life together now they're scattering they're coming back together hey this is what happened but to have one of them beheaded it's like, it must have been a blow to everybody, no matter where they were, to get that news. So, I don't know. It just seemed a bigger yeah. blow to me this time as I'm reading High through it. Uh, yeah. To continue to move on. I mean, you've already lost Jesus. Mm-hmm. And and the continue to just continue to march on afterwards. That would be hard. It would be hard. Right. Like your best, your best friends that you did life with all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So Herod's actions, they pleased the Jewish leaders, so he took further measures. He had Peter arrested and imprisoned, intending him to to bring him to trial over the Passover. Remember, James is just beheaded, and now Peter's arrested. Well, and also, I want to point out the trial after the Passover. So this is a year after the other Passover. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. And so this had to have been like so many flashbacks because like this is over the Passover that Peter is arrested and mm-hmm. and everything. I'm just like, there had to have been so many flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go again. That's probably what they're thinking. Mm-hmm. So, and, and James was just killed. Yeah. <laughs> so the church responded by fervently praying for Peter's release while he remained in custody, guarded by four squads of soldiers. Um, and Acts 12, 5 says, but while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. And MacArthur said constant prayer was offered to God for him. The word constant also has the idea of earnest. Literally, mm-hmm. the word pictures something as stretching out all they can for something. I could almost picture them on the floor, stretched out. Um, the verb ekinos, or is related to I don't know how to say this (laughs) It's a medical term describing the stretching of a muscle to the limits. They were like all flat out on the floor, completely stretched out in prayer. And tomorrow we'll find out what happens, which is a fun story, but they were 
stretch out in prayer because their friend was just killed. It's the Passover again. Now Peter's in prison. Like this is getting serious. This is very serious. But we're learning about prayer. Mm -hmm. We're learning about prayer. And just the consistency and the constancy and just just the ferventness that we need to be on our face before our Father. And it builds that muscle. I mean, anytime that, that you're working out and you're lifting weights or you're doing something, you're building that muscle. And if you know, um, again, if it, along the medical tradition, if you break down that muscle, it comes back stronger. Mm -hmm. It comes back stronger. So that's what, that's what they're doing here. It's yeah. exciting. Okay. Well, we need to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned. The word of the day is expansion, which is the Ooh. action of becoming larger or more extensive. Now I had a whole nother note and I will get to that, but I guess their prayer muscle is getting expanded too. It's becoming larger and more extensive. That's a side note. That's a bonus for you people. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't what we were going to talk about, but I just had to tie that in because Michelle just said that. Um, but expansion takes work. The early Christians faced the daunting task of taking the gospel message beyond the conf the familiar confines of their own culture and traditions. They had to grapple with the deeply ingrained belief that salvation was exclusively for the Jewish people. But God's plan was expansive, embracing mm -hmm. people from all walks of life and from all corners of the world. So this is like significant because uh, the ex this emphasizes the division and the exclusion. Like we are called to be ambassadors of expansion. So just as God's grace reached out to Cornelius and the Gentiles, there's a universal scope of the gospel. And sometimes we look around the world today and like, oh, Jesus is gospels for everybody, but oh, maybe not those people because they're just mm -hmm. like too much. There's too much happening there. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. It's for everybody. So just like everybody from diverse backgrounds, they need Jesus. Um, so in Acts 11, we see that expanding the gospel's reach was met with skepticism and resistance, even among believers. And Peter's testimony was initially met with doubt as he shared the story of Cornelius. Hearts were transformed and praise erupted. Mm -hmm. And this teaches that expansion often requires a shift in perspective and a willingness to reevaluate our preconceived notions. And I just have to jump in here because our church, we let go of this little sweet church and um, just very strong Christians. And we've just started a food pantry and we're going to be doing a celebrate recovery, which you know, I mean, when you have a celebrate recovery, you can have people with addictions and you're going to mm -hmm. have your, 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 this is who we are intentionally going to reach out to, but there's conversations that we're having like in our small groups now we're going to be stretched people. We're going to have yeah. people come in um, that are addicts that have great needs and it's what Jesus wants, but we're already having the conversations like uh, don't be shocked because we're going to be stretched. And I think mm -hmm. it's a good thing. We're, mm -hmm. we're expanding, we're reaching out, but it's also, we can't just think that everything's going to stay the same and comfortable because it's not. Right. right. It's so true. You know, I want to take a step back here as we talk about expansion and remember all that God has done from the beginning of time. I mean, let's remember the story um, that he's written up till now. So he created, first of all, that is incredible expansion. He created and then sin came into the world and God has been on a campaign ever since to restore his, mm. world, his people his people, his chosen ones were a small group of people. He gave them laws and he gave them rules for their living and for their good. He brought them to a land flowing with milk and honey. Again, continually think about expansion here. He brought them to a land flowing with milk and honey. He dwelled among them. Mm -hmm. We witnessed how he had patience with his people every step of Israel's history. I mean, remember the wilderness, the judges, the kings, the people during the prophets. God was building anticipation in the hearts of his people for a day when a true king would rule and 
reign. He expanded his kingdom, not in the way that people, his people expected, but his kingdom expanded when Christ came and walked the earth. It expanded Mm -hmm. in so many ways. I mean, paradigms were shifted, minds were blown, and now God is shifting those paradigms again. And God is not just the God of the Jews, but he's God of all and capitalize that all. Like God is the God of all. His expansion is for all. His expansion is for all to see, for all who believe in him to experience. And so his expansion, I mean, when you think about expansion, like this is mind blowing expansion. When you think of where the world has come from or from at that point till now, and think about all the people that have come to know Christ as their savior. Think about all the people around the world who are following him, who are walking in his ways. I mean, that is expansion, mind-blowing expansion. And I cannot wait till heaven till we get to see this, the nations that are there worshiping. I remember the first time I attended an international um, church service in Prague. It was 2000, I believe. And we were there. uh, It was in English. But they said, where are you from? There's people from Ireland and Japan. And we are from the United States and Canada and like all over. And they had times where we prayed out loud. And they said, you could pray aloud in English or in your own language. Um, and it was like sitting there. I just get goosebumps just thinking about it to hear people praying to God in a like I don't even understand what they were saying, but I understood their worship and their prayer for God. And I'm like, this is amazing that we're from all over the world and we're all here in this one little building. There's probably a hundred people and everyone is praising God together and worshiping God. We sang the same song and there's all these accents and I'm like, this is so cool. That's what God has wanted from the beginning. And he had this journey that he needed to take. And now we're in ex- the expansion mode. Like mm-hmm. we've been the building mode and the, um, you know, Christ crucified. So now we have the way to salvation, but now we're expanding and taking it into the world. And yeah. it's, it's rough. And I'm just amazed. I'm amazed by how God is using these people and also amazed um, that, that, they kept going. I mean, they had Jesus, of course, they had, but they were, they had to be tough to face the mm-hmm. things that they were facing. Mm-hmm. They really did. They did. Would you pray for us just that mm-hmm. we would have the expansion mentality, but we would also have the awe mentality of watching God mm-hmm. expand everything. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we are a people that love our comfort zones. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. we would love to just stay safe and comfortable and never have conflict and never be expanded, whether it's emotionally or physically or spiritually, Lord. But you don't want that. You say to go out into the world. You want us out of our comfort zones. And the Bible is showing these men and women that were doing it in such amazing, extreme ways. And sometimes it wasn't even their desire. They were scattering because they were fearing for their lives, Lord. Um, I pray that you will help us to have an expansion mentality to step out and reach the people that you desire for us to reach because you love them just Mm -hmm. like you love us, Lord. And I pray that you will just give us a burden and a heart for those around us that do not know you, Lord, and help us to be willing to expand, even though it's not comfortable. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Acts 12 verses 6 through 25. Acts 13 and Acts 14, 1 through 20. And I want to thank the team at Life Audio. You wouldn't be listening to Daily Bible Podcasts without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find other great Christian podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.